Hi there, today we're unboxing a PTZ camera. So this particular camera is a four megapixel camera, power over ethernet. Obviously being PTZ, you can pan, tilt and zoom on there. And what's quite amazing about it, it's got 20 times optical zoom. So quite looking forward to testing this one out. And it's waterproof as well and has night vision and motion detection. So let's have a quick look around the packaging. Simple packaging, nothing too fancy there. Just basic wording on there, nothing too fancy. Mini speed dome camera, and that's about it. Nothing else on there. Okay, let's open it up and see what we get in the packaging. Okay, first of all, got a CD, probably some software on there to configure the device. Okay, quick user manual it looks like speed down quick user manual some details on installing it that's it simple as that nothing more Let's see what you get inside here okay so some fixtures looks like good quality ones actually some thick screws there and big raw plugs, obviously to hold this device up. Power cable. Quality seems okay, nothing too amazing. And fused as well, so that's good. Got a power adapter here. Let's check out the output. So it's 12 volts, 3000 milliamps. Okay, that as well, it's not too bad. And then we've got some fixtures to seal the ethernet port on the camera and the actual camera itself. So let's take it out of its packaging. Good weight to it, good solid build. All of this metal. couple of obviously methods of uh, attaching this so you could drill a hole straight through the wall and obviously the wire is completely hidden so no one can see anything or you could feed it sideways or down below put it into a waterproof box and then you've got your sealed cables so that's fine so the actual cable itself you've got two so one's for your ethernet to provide the connectivity, so it's not Wi-Fi, it has to be directly plugged in to either power over ethernet point or just an ethernet. And then you've got your power itself. So if you were running this into a system with power of ethernet, you wouldn't need to plug in any additional power, just straight over the ethernet. Let's have a look at the actual dome of the camera so completely motorized as you can see and it feels good so if you wanted to take this apart a bit more you could probably just take out these screws and this will drop down probably make it easier to install and then you can just feed it back in there and attach it so obviously it is a bit of a weight to install it straight away like this but not too bad good construction actually okay so I've laid the PTZ camera with the power adapter and power supply on my desk let's get it connected up and get it configured so the connector on the actual PTZ there's a point on the power adapter you just plug that straight in on the actual cable itself the other end goes into the power adapter we can just plug that straight into the mains next thing is ethernet so i've got my ethernet cable here plug that in and then we just power it up so you can see what happens when it's turned on for the first time There you go. 
So that's the camera initializing. Okay, so I'm at my computer. I've placed the CD that comes with the package into my computer, into the CD drive. And this is the content of the CD drive. So you get two manuals, one for the installation of the PTZ and another one for the client software. So if I navigate to this folder, AJD upgrade tool, and there's an EXE in there. So let's install that. So this should have the discovery software to pick up the PTZ camera. So just double click that. Let's install that. Okay, and run. Okay, so let's go into the application and it's picked up the camera straight away. So let's tick the box, right click and modify IP address. So let's change it to my current network. So this is my test network at home. And perhaps we'll change that to 210. Okay, to that. Okay, firewalls requesting access. There you go, it's picked it up again. So now we should be able to connect to the device. Okay, next, let's attempt to log on to the actual PTZ. So let me open up my web browser. I'll put in the IP address and let's log on to it. So username is admin and the password is one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, please click here to download the web plugin and install it as administrator. It's running that. Okay, that's installed. Let's close down and reopen. Okay, allow it to run. Okay, so let's log in to the system now. And there you go, accessible straight away. So as we've adjusted the IP address of the system, you can connect to it straight away after that. So I've positioned it in the garden area of my property and let's go through some of the options you can see so initially you can see live and playback now there's no method of locally recording on the actual device as there's no slot for a, an sd card etc but you can record obviously onto your computer if you have the client software set up so let's click on local setup snapshot store record store 2 playback snapshots store 2 so the local locations on your computer. Storage path, you can't get into that. Let's click on configuration. So you've got the camera, image. So if I scroll down, you can adjust the actual values on there. Let's keep going just to show what you've got. So this is where you can sort of flip the image if you wanted to, if you've positioned the camera in, the, in an odd way really. Color settings as well, you can adjust them. I'm gonna leave as is, no real requirement to adjust that. I think it looks pretty good how it is. Video, let's see if it's on the maximum. And that's, ooh. So I'd say probably, let's take it up to the top for the mainstream and substream. So you've got two streams, so when you connect to it, if you've got a system that picks a substream, that's what you'll see. So let's check the frame rate as well, 15 frames per second, that's fine. And we'll just save those. Okay, let's go to audio. There's no audio on this network got basic that's the basic details obviously it's got a static not DHCP port wise 
This is the web access port, so obviously port 80 to connect over your browser, control port, and RTSP access port, P2P, so this is the QR code you scan in to get it connected to your uh, app on your Android phone, for example. We'll show that in a bit. SMTP email details, FTP details as well, so you can FTP pictures directly onto a location. Access encryption. So OnVIF is the one of interest to me, so that's how I could get it onto my existing NVR. Okay, let's go to PTZ next, PTZ config. Okay, we can leave these as is. Event motion detection. Okay. Okay, you can set a detection area if you wanted. And schedule it for motion detection during a certain period. That's quite good. Let's disable that again. Storage, K, okay, memory card and USB. Not aware of any memory cards like I've already said on this, so not sure what that's gonna do. Record schedule, set to record constantly. Device manager. Okay, user system, users, device language. Change that to English, save that. Date and time. So we're in the UK, so that's GMT. And that is actually 17 at the moment. Save that, okay, that's good. Factory reset, if you want to reset the settings, reboot the device, upgrade the firmware, and that's it. Okay, let's click on alarm. So these are any alarm detections it's had. And let's go back to live playback. So let's see if we can take it into full screen, and wow. That picture quality is pretty amazing. And obviously it is live, you can see leaves on the tree moving. Pretty impressive, really is. Okay, so one of the features of this is 20 times zoom on there, optical zoom. So let's test it out. So I'm gonna zoom in perhaps to an area over here. So let's go. It's not too bad, let's keep zooming. Keep going all the way. Okay, it's saying on 20 times now. And oh, wow, look at the quality on that. Let me see if I can maximize that. There you go. Very clear. Let's move a little bit more to the side just to show a bit more detail. Very impressive, really is. And that's the maximum. Very impressive, really is. It's a very nice system actually, giving you the ability to sort of zoom into this sort of level. You can adjust the focus as well. So if it's out of focus, you can bring it back in. And if I zoom out, it should auto focus, there you go. No real need to really mess around with that. Let's click on the iris button, see what difference that makes. Nothing really, so that's fine. What's this do? So real time and smooth. So if I... Still very good. Let's put it back to how it was. Controllability wise, it's not too bad. Seems quite responsive. Sometimes there's a bit of a delay, but obviously I am on my local network doing this. Let's zoom in on the tree. Just at the side here a bit more. 
it is quite nice having to have you know sort of this sort of level of you know the, this sort of level of possibility of being able to just zoom into things so if you were out and about and you wanted to see different areas just to make sure things were okay this this is very impressive so there you go pretty good pretty easy to use. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna attempt to do is actually get the PTZ working with our NVR, so our network video recorder. So the NVR is by a company called Anki, and that particular one doesn't support higher resolutions. Now, the good thing about this PTZ is you can amend the settings on there. So. If you can see here, so I've taken the encode mode down to H264 and I've done the substream encode mode as well, taken that down. And resolution wise, the maximum resolution my NVR can support is 1080p and I've taken the substream down to 640 by 360. Now with those settings set, I just hit save and let's flip over. To our NVR and there you go picture quality is amazing really is good it's just a shame my NVR can't support these higher resolutions now configuring it was pretty straightforward so if you see there you can see the NVR has picked up and port 80s used for onvif and it was simple as that just entered in the details so let me click on it So obviously the IP address, the port, username, admin, and the passwords, one, two, three, four, five, six. And there you go, as simple as that. Works pretty well. Uh, issue with my NVR is obviously there's no controls to actually move the actual PTZ around, but let me go over to the interface on the actual PTZ and adjust it from there. And there you go. works quite well. It's just a shame my NVR can't support that sort of functionality. But yeah, just impressed how easily I could set this up and get it going. Let me zoom in now as well, just give it a moment to catch up. We'll go in as close as we can. Let me adjust the camera a little bit. That's 14 times zoom at the moment. Let me carry on zooming in. And there you go. Phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal, the picture quality on this. And nice, it integrates quite easily with my NVR. And let me zoom back, give you perspective how much I've zoomed in there you go okay next let me show you how to get this PTZ configured on your mobile device and to see and control the actual picture so if we go to configuration network and P2P that's the app you want to install so Daniel, so if I go to Play Store, type it in there, so Dan Ale, there's the app, Let's just hit install, give it a moment, download and install. Okay, so the app's installed, let's open. Give it a moment to start up. The next thing we want to do is sign up. So let me do that off camera and then we can proceed with doing the next step. Okay, so once you've signed in to the app, this is what you're presented with. I'll click add devices. I need to type in my Wi-Fi password. So let me do that off camera. Okay, so I've 
typed in my Wi-Fi password, clicked next, and it's doing a search for the device. Now, there's two ways you can do this. You can let this automatically find it on your network, or you could scan in the QR code. So this QR code is on the actual interface of the PTZ. So in the P2P area, there's a QR code. So let me scan that in. So if I click that, I'll give it access to the camera. Okay, I've scanned it in and it's picked it up. So I'll call it test. And there you go. As simple as that to add it in. So I select it. You now have all the facilities available on the PTZ. So there you go. I can zoom for instance. Let's give it a moment to catch up. There you go. Picture quality wise, really good. Obviously you can take snaps. You can record directly off the app on this. So that's quite nice. Okay, let's see if the camera works off my data connection. So I've just turned off Wi-Fi. 4G is kicking in now. It's giving you a message as well. Be careful you're on data connection and let's go into full screen give it a moment yeah bit of a lag on there but working yeah excellent no ports to open up on your router to get this going really good okay let me show you some of the other options on there if you had additional cameras you could see them all you've got messages here there's no messages Okay, cloud services, you can automatically record footage to the cloud, so that's quite good. Nice having that option. Not sure if there's a cost involved with that one. Obviously, you can take pictures directly off your mobile device and you can record as well. No audio, hence the error there. But there you go, very straightforward, nothing too complex about this. Okay, so another thing to show on the actual phone app has a full functionality so obviously I have shown the zoom let's give it a second and you can move the camera as well let's give it a moment and there you go there is a slight lag like I've already said but still pretty cool be able to control it like this remotely and I'll zoom in again takes a moment to sort of catch up and for the image to go clear again but still very good let's zoom in all the way just give it time to catch up I can see it actually on my NVR in the background and there you go how impressive is that you can see the blades of grass and the little other bits we've got in the background as well so clarity wise very impressive really is having 20 times optical zoom okay so it's evening time and just to show the picture quality in the night so quite a distance as you can see night vision works well as well got quite a bit of clarity in the picture so let me now zoom in and see what that's like There you go. Slight delay. Let's give it a moment just to sort of focus. So obviously I've gone in quite quick. And obviously it's 20 times optical zoom and there you go. Crystal clear. Amazing. And you can see the blades of grass as well. Phenomenal move a little bit there you go you can see the blades of grass right 
What I'm going to do, I'm going to flick back so you can see the computer screen and the NVR at the same time, just to show you the slight delay you see. So as I'm zooming out, there you go. You see? So on the actual web interface, moving slightly quicker. Next thing, let's take it all the way out. So good, very impressive night vision. Obviously the clarity is amazing as well. Let's give it a moment to focus and show you it on the phone as well. So see, there's a bit of a lag on there as well. Pretty good, really is. So that's using their app that they suggest to use. Okay, so let me show the existing app I'm using, the XMI app connecting to my existing NVR. So it works with that as well, no issues there. So if I click there and click on HD, there you go. Picture quality is really good. Let me lower it a little bit, so just so you can see if there's any lag as I'm zooming in and out. So let me zoom in. So the speed actually on this is more accurate because obviously it's pulling it off the NVR. So there you go, night vision works really well. Okay, so you've seen the unboxing of this PTZ security camera. Resolution wise, it's a four megapixel power over ethernet camera. Power over ethernet wise, my particular NVR that I had couldn't support it, but others can. I guess it just needs to provide a higher voltage. I don't think there was enough going to it to actually power it. Picture quality wise, it's HD and the resolution it supports is 2,592 by 1,944. The zoom option was absolutely amazing. 20 times optical zoom. It's waterproof as well to IP66. Build quality is great as well. It's nice, it just integrates straight into my existing system. So there you go. I hope it's helped anyone thinking of purchasing this. Thanks for viewing and don't forget to like and subscribe.